Hello, everyone. Rachel Weaver here. I'm on faculty and staff at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. Jenny and I have been making a series of videos in which she uh, shares with us a virtual book review. Um, <clears throat> Jenny is on um, faculty at Lighthouse Writers Workshop as well as part of the MFA faculty at Regis University. Um, and she also reviews books. She's reviewed over a thousand books in various publications, um, such as the Minneapolis Star Review, the Rocky Mountain News, um, High Country News, Dallas Morning News, among lots of others. Um, okay, Jenny, I am turning it over to you to talk about our next book. Okay, our next book is Notes on a Silencing by Lacey Crawford. It is gonna be published on July 14th, so you should be able to get it this week, I think, this is running. Um, this is a book that's about a tough subject, but it's beautifully written, and I think it's really important. Um, Lacey Crawford, when she was 15, was at a, a student at a boarding school in New England. It was an elite boarding school called St. Paul's, and to give you an idea, I don't run any circles, so I didn't really, it didn't ring any bells when I heard the name of it, but people that have gone there include John Kerry, Robert Mueller, um, and the fictional James Bond was even written to have gone <laughs> to this place. Um, and while, while she, when she was 15, um, an 18 year old hockey player lured her to his room after hours, um, asking for help with a math assignment. And she was flattered because she was like tutoring some other hockey players. Um, so she goes to his room, which is totally illegal for her to be out after hours um, against the rules of the school. And she gets to his room and he and another student haul her in through the window and she's on a bed and the boys are naked and they assault her and she doesn't think of she doesn't cry out because they live right next to um like a rector or someone who lives in the dorm an adult that and she's worried that she would get in trouble and ex be expelled for um having gone into the room and then what follows from there is just um an institutional cover-up of this horrible thing that happened to her. Um, what, what I think is really interesting about this book if for writers of memoirs is that, so she's now, I think in her mid forties or something, I think that it has taken her this long to sort of reconstruct what happened to her because when it happened to her when she's 15, it kind of shatters your, your brain <laughs> and you start to believe the things that people say about you. Like, the administration, you know, um, told her parents, she's not a good girl, like she's a slut, that she brought it on herself, all this stuff, even though it was a statutory crime. She was 15 and, and the boys were 18. Um, and so she tried to reconstruct what happened because when, you're, when your consciousness is kind of shattered by trauma at that young, you don't, you don't even know what was true or what was not. And so um, now at this age, she went through and she found all the documentation that she could, like police reports, medical reports, and things like that. And she pieces it together. And I feel like it's like a process of piecing together the story to like make herself whole again, um, because she was disbelieved for so long. And she admits like, okay, I'm sure that I could perceive things wrong after this tra trauma and, um, what went on but so she goes meticulously through everything she can interviews data um to construct this story again and what she does is like create a story of uh, a very powerful institution aligned against one young girl um because when when she gets um she gets a herpes infection deep in her throat from this assault and so there's no doubt that it was an assault i mean there's no way she could get that there without having been you know raped and um, the, her parents, when they find out, are, are really upset and they want to press charges, but the school um, extorts them, basically. They, they say that they will accuse her of having been a drug dealer if they come forward with anything, which is totally not true at all. Um, and this school has been doing it, she found out, for decades. Um, this school is powerful. It has very powerful connections with the state, um, like the DA's office and things like that. So they've been able to quash charges against them for years. And this kind of community, this culture has gone on for years. Finally, like I think two or three years ago, one girl was able to successfully bring her rape, rapist from the school to conviction. So finally, like the story's coming out, but I think it's a powerful story, not just a personal story, 
not just like the way she meticulously constructs everything through research, but also just a portrait of how institutions can crush and silence victims um, because they have so many resources. They have so many lawyers and um, so much experience, frankly. <laughs> it seems like they have so much experience when something like this happens. Okay, we can put this to rest. We can make it seem like it's her fault. Um, we can, and basically they, they held the leverage of, if you do this, um, we will, you know, you'll have a bad record and you'll never get into college. And she really cared about getting into a, a good college. And it, I mean, it was horrifying what she went through. They, they told, the hockey team told everyone to avoid her because they told her that she had herpes even before they told Lacey that she had herpes. They did a, di a doctor's exam and didn't tell her what was wrong with her, but they told everyone else in the school. So there's rumors and recriminations that followed her her whole life. And I just think it's a real act of bravery. And she's such a graceful, intelligent, and clear writer. So check out Notes from a Silencing. It's a difficult subject, but it's a beautiful book and it's written so well.